If you are in grade 11 and you do IT as a subject, let's practice some arrays with this mock test. This is part one, so we'll do the first few questions. There'll be other parts with the other questions. So let's get into it. So the first, let's scroll down to see what the question's about. So here we go. We've got a project and the program uses parallel arrays for questions one to three. Parallel arrays means there's two arrays and whatever is in position one of the one array corresponds to whatever's in position one of the other array or other arrays. So we have an array called array teams that consists of the teams names of soccer, soccer teams in the league. And then there's an array of strings with array results. Now it's an array of strings for results. We'll see why. It contains two numbers separated by a comma. And the number on the left of the comma represents the number of games that the team has won, the corresponding team based on the name in the first array. And then the second number is the number of games the team has drawn. Okay, And then there is our team count that tells you how many um, elements are in both arrays. Obviously, because it's parallel, it'll have the same number of elements in both arrays. Obviously, the array isn't full. It might go up to like 100 or whatever, and but there's only our team count teams in the array. So it's been populated for us. So let's have a look here. So there's array teams, and there's a couple of the team names. You can see there's Lincoln FC in position one, Tiger Club in position two. And in the array results array, this is the second array, at position one, these are the results of Lincoln FC. So according to the description here, that 30 represents that Lincoln FC has won 30 games, and that three represents that they have drawn three games. And with Tiger Club, they have won 26 games, and they have drawn eight. Okay, so that's how we interpret this array, these parallel arrays. So let's get to the first question. Okay, complete the code for question Q1 that prompts the user for a name of a soccer team and search, ooh, searcher. So we're going to use our search algorithm for in the array team. So we want to find that team. And if that there is a soccer team, we must say, hey, that team is in the league. And if it's not, then we must say, hey, it's not in the league. So we'll message must display if no team was found. So this is just to check that the team exists in the array. So for this one, we're not really dealing with the array results we're just dealing with the names it's a simple search through the names so let's just go look at the program so we're going to go to our program so just a reminder yeah yeah the, the two arrays so you can see it can take up to 25 elements but that doesn't mean there are 25 elements in the array um, so we're not going to use that 25 in our for loop or in any of loops that we're just going to we know that there are only 20 items in the beginning in our team count so we're going to use this our team count variable to determine how many values are in the array. So there's our two arrays, and there is our program, or our, there's the, the IDE. Uh, let's go look. So we're going to search. So we're going to. So obviously we need to prompt the user, if I remember correctly, we need to prompt the user for a name of a soccer team. So let's use a input box for that. So we're going to have a variable is input of type string. And we are going to get the value from an input box. Um, just put name, enter name of team. And then we put in whatever they're going to type in. Now, I like to put in a default value into the input box just so that when we're doing the testing, it goes a lot quicker that we don't have to type it every single time we test it. So there is our input now. We need to search for that name inside of the array. Now, if you remember, if you've gone through our videos on arrays, you would have come across videos that explain how to do a linear search. We're assuming that this is not a sorted array, so we can use a linear search irrespective of whether it's sorted or not. And if you've forgotten it, then go to our video on it. There's also a summary note on it. There's the linear search. I've got it over here. So there is the algorithm. And when it comes to searching, it's best if you want in an exam or test situation, it's best to try and memorize this so that in an exam you know it so well that you can type it quickly and it gives you more time for the other exam. So this is basically the gist. We're going to have to have a looping variable. We're going to have to have a, a Boolean variable to determine if we found it or not. So little things like that. So let's have a look at our code. So we're going to come over here and we're going to declare our looping variable. I'll just call it R. And we need our Boolean that's going to tell me if I found it or not. And Boolean, spell it right, Mr. Long. Boolean. Okay, it's a, it's a thin uh, ghost, Boolean. Okay, so we're going to set off with our loop. If you remember the algorithm, we're going to go to our algorithm here. 
we set our loop to 1, we initialize the looping variable to 1, and we assume that we have not found what we have looking what we're looking for. Okay, we found we haven't found it yet, so we're going to set be found to false. Now we got a loop. Now we're not going to use a for loop. And the reason for that, if you remember correctly, is because when we find what we're looking for, we want to stop looking. So when we find it, we're going to set be found to true. So while be found is still false, we must keep looking, if that makes sense. And we're going to have a begin and end for our while loop. End of while. Now that's the one scenario. The one scenario is that we carry, while while we haven't found what we're looking for, keep looking. But the other scenario, we want to keep looking forever. When we reach the end of the array, we also want to stop looking. So there's two con scenarios. So while we haven't found what we're looking for, and while we're still not at the end of the array, now R is our looping variable going one, two, three. While that is less than how many elements are in the array the array size so we want to while it's less than equal to the array size and if you remember that our team count was that variable that told me how many elements were in the array i know there's it can take up to 25 but we're going to assume that it's not full and that they told me that that's how many elements are in the array so that is my loop and then in, near the bottom here we're going to have to obviously increase r at some point okay because we want R to go one, two, three, four until it gets to the end. You can see there's that R, which actually is attached to an else. So we we we're looking at position one. We're going to look at if position one in the array. Now, what is our array called? Array teams position R. So if position one is equal to whatever the input is, then we have found what we are looking for. Then we have found it. So what do we do if we find it? Well, we obviously set be found to true because, hey, we found it. And we want to record it if we want to. Do we want to record any information? You can record its position. We can um, display any details. If you look at the question, if we go back to the question. They just want me to display yes or no. So I don't need to record anything. So, But if they wanted me to say the results of that particular team, then I would have to record its position and so I can find it in the corresponding array results and stuff like that. So that you can do that. Well, I'm just going to say, no, it's there. Boom. And if we do not found it, then you must increase R. So only increase R if you haven't found it. So it's going to keep going. Boom, boom, boom. And that way we can do our search algorithm. So it's going to search through it. When it finds it, it says, hey, be found is true. That's all I need to know that it's found it. Boom. Now we get at the end of the loop here. Yeah? We're at the end of the loop. Now, once the loop has completed, that is the only time I can say I found it or not. You can't say you found it, you haven't found it, if you haven't looked through everything yet. So only once the loop has completed will we then say, yes, we found it or not. Because the loop will only stop if we find it, which means we, we, not, we have found what we're looking for, or we reach the end of the array. So if we get to here, and if be found is still equal to false at this particular point. If we set it to false and it went through the entire array, got to the end, and be found never changed to true, then we know that we actually never found that value. So message, um, I'm going to say is input plus not found in league. So that means we didn't find it. Okay. But if be found is equal to true, then we know it is there. So then I'm going to say else. And we can say uh, show message is input. And how did they want me to say it? If you look at the question, is a valid team in this league? Okay, so we're going to say, just like they say, is a valid team in this league? Okay, so there we go. So that's how we display it. So, so let's test it to see if it works. Let's run it. It's compiling the program. And here we go. So we know Northdale is one of the teams. So I'm going to say find is Northdale one of the teams. It goes boom. Northdale is a valid team in this league. Great. Now if I say Northdale or if I, let's say Northdale 2. Well, I'm sure there's no team called Northdale 2. No, Northdale 2 is not in the league. Okay. Now. There's one little thing we did not look at. I don't know if you noticed it, but right at the bottom here, this note, the user's input must not be case sensitive, which means the code must work irrespective of whether the user types the name with small or capital letters. Now, does that mean we have to do anything differently? I don't know. Well, let's test our program. We know that Northdale works, but what happens if I type in North 
Dale. No, it doesn't find. Ooh, so it's not case sensitive. So let's let's go. Let's go. How do we do that? Well, all I'm gonna do is when I'm doing the check to see if it matches, I'm just gonna when it does this, I'm say upper case. Change the value in the array team to uppercase. When we check it, it's not actually changing the array, it's just when we get the value, get the value from the array at position R, change it to uppercase. If that is the same as the uppercase version of the input. So it converts it to uppercase, converts it to uppercase. If it's a match then, then we know that the team is valid. So it only changes it to uppercase when it does the check. It's not actually changing that variable. It's not actually changing the value in that array. It's just when it does the check, it converts the value and then does the check. So let's see if that works now. Farm the team, and now we want North Dale. It's a valid team in this league. There we go. So now it works for irrespective of what you type in. Okay, great. For the other videos from this mock test, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like this video, give us uh, your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.